amazement of the salvation that you have wrought within us, that we would participate together in baptism. For those who are going beneath the water, Father God, that they would continue to walk in newness of life. And for those of us who have been baptized, that we would think back to that glorious day when we went beneath the waters and came up to rise to newness of life. We have you to thank for that. So as we look to your text, would you add to ask that you would give us understanding? What does this portray? If we understand the text, we understand what happened to us, and we become eager to participate. So Father God, may the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. And may you be lifted, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning we do have the rare opportunity, I think it happened once before, if I'm not mistaken, of celebrating the two sacraments that we participate in here at Faith Fellowship. We have the Lord's Supper here this morning, which we will participate at the end. And then, as I mentioned, we're headed south to Malaga Camp. Now, to get to Malaga Camp, you just go past the two entrances, the third entrance, which is labeled the south entrance. You'll make a right there. Go down. The pool will be on your right. There's some parking area to the left. I'd ask that you park tight as you can and get as many cars in as we can right there. And then we'll be participating with, uh, but let me see, I think there's five of us uh, going into the water this morning for baptism. Maybe more. Who knows? Once the word is preached, God can do amazing things. But um, I encourage you to go down to Malaga Camp and participate and celebrate with these five who are committing their lives uh, through baptism uh, to Jesus Christ. So we do the Lord's Supper once a month. Baptism is done once in a believer's life. Uh, I'll jump the gun I had at my sermon, but I'll do it now. Uh, I was baptized both. I'm double um, taken care of. Uh, Peter baptism, my dad uh, baptized, or Paul Pedrick I actually baptized me. Uh, as an infant, uh, into the covenant community, my parents were believers, so as believers they wanted their child to grow up in the covenant community, and they sealed that with a baptism. And as I come to age, uh, I received Jesus Christ. Faith happened, and when faith happens, by New Testament, I guess I can say um, baptism happens, but I didn't. I stood on my pedo baptism, my infant baptism, for many years. I have their certificates. I've been baptized, and a lot of Baptist churches that I went into, um, I couldn't convince them of that. Uh, that just wasn't going to work. But uh, it was at a Baptist church um, several years ago, probably more than several years ago. Time gets away from me. Um, that I made a decision to do uh, creo baptism, believer baptism, immersion, baptism by immersion, because the word gripped me. I didn't have the experience of baptism to go along with the experience of salvation, the way the New Testament would have it. Now, I could have not been baptized and went along with my infant baptism for a long time, but I decided to plunge beneath the waters because I was eager to display what Christ has done for me. Buried with him at baptism, rising again to walk in newness of life. There's no better picture than immersion of what happened to you the moment you got saved. We were looking at 1 Peter, and Peter is that doxology of 12 verses of the glorious of your salvation. How glorious, how wonderful. We're always looking to that salvation when things go wrong. We look to our salvation, and that's what Peter had done. So this morning with the help of the word. My aim is for you to see the glorious reality of what this portrays within the verses that I'm going to share with you. If you get what these verses portray, you'll get what happened to you in salvation, which means you'll be eager to go beneath the waters. By the way, that's a song. If you ever get a chance, just Google beneath the waters. It's an amazing song about Baptism. So my text this morning I'm going to use is Romans. Uh, I really struggle on which text to use because there's a lot. Uh, I don't know if Jimmy's been here at the end with his Romans uh, study, but Romans 5. That's where we're at. We're going to be at the end of Romans 5, verse 20. We'll jump right over. There's no chapter or uh, verse divisions in the original text, so we're just going to read from 5, 20 through 6, 4. Everything's on the screen for you page turners, though. You can turn to Romans 5, verse 20. There it goes. Now the law came in to increase the trespass. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What shall we say then? 
Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? That I'll preach. Man, I almost I want to go off on that verse right there because I was reading up on that, and that's just a glorious, glorious verse, verse 2, but that's not our focus. Our focus will be on 3 and 4 this morning, and I'm not getting the clicker. You guys got the control back there? You do. Here it comes, I promise. There's the mouse. We're going to do it. Do you not, hmm, is that 3 and 4? Yes. Do you not know? I think I got to go back one, Jim, because that'll mess me up. It's not working. So let's, there we go. That's it. Go back right there. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Verse 4. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, very important, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So one of the great things about this text is it shows that, as I said already, if you understand what baptism portrays or displays, you understand what really happened to you when you got saved, when you became a Christian. And that's a glorious thing to know. Many of us came to faith and were baptized at a point in our lives when we didn't know a lot. In my baptism, in my adult baptism, I didn't know a whole lot. I just know that I was united with Christ, and whether this was, I'll just say mystical. There's a mystical, there's a presence of Jesus here this morning within the elements. There's a presence of Jesus within the baptism. There's this mystical thing that happens in both sacraments that we just don't quite understand. However, the text really does point to a favorable thing here this morning. So it is expected you'll learn more later, after your baptism. A lot of knowledge comes in, and then you say, oh my goodness, now that I know that, I have to be rebaptized." We don't do that. It's placed in the front, in the beginning of your Christian walk, so that as we gain more knowledge, we get to look back at the glories of our baptism and how just a mustard seed of faith is all it takes for us to receive Christ as Lord and Savior and enter the waters of baptism. So I'm just going to deal with two things before we go to the table this morning that baptism portrays in this text according to just verses 3 and 4. Do I have the controls yet? I don't. There we go. It's yellow. Do you not know? So here he's talking. All of us who have been baptized. So he's calling on your memory to an experience of what you've been through. Do you not know all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were there buried, therefore, with him by baptism in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. I got to get back to my, because my thing is messed up. So baptism portrays our death and the death of Christ. And here's the great truth about your Christian salvation. You have died. Amen. You have died. And it's an amazing thing about going unto the water. Remember the billboard of when you die, you will meet God? That was all over. The, and I switched it around. When you meet God, you will die. The death of the old, unbelieving, rebellious self comes to an end and you have a new life, a new desire for God. So when Christ died, he died our death. It's a beautiful thing. This means at least two things. One is that we're not the same. I am not the same. I am a new creation. Uh, we were at the board meeting in Malaga yesterday, and I was banging my head on the table, and I know Kenny was trying to my pain. And we were gotten the subject of giving, and I just blurted out, we're not the same. We're, we're, we're just new creations. We're doing things that we've never done before, and we're testing these new avenues of faith. We are not the same as we were pre-salvation. Another is that our future physical death that lies in front of us has been drastically changed. There's no more fear of death. We sang the song, 
Um, I forget the lyrics I was singing as I'm like, wow, that just goes uh, with what we're preaching this morning. Our future death no longer has the same reality as it did pre-salvation. Next text, if I don't have it, so that's up to you. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? We don't fear death anymore. That's what I saw in Lee Britain. That was just absolutely beautiful. She was, had no fear of death, absolutely none. She was totally convinced of there is no death. What lies for me is new life and life abundantly. So the death that lies before us has been phenomenally changed. We no longer have the fear, no longer the condemnation. And Paul says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So in this text, one more, we have three intos. Into is very important. There's a repetition for a reason. Into Christ Jesus, baptized into his death, and then verse 4, baptism into death. So what this says is that baptism portrays, that's um, a, a word that I'm trying to really work out here, portrays our union with Christ. That is, we're united to him spiritually so that his death and his life will become our life. We are one together. We are joined together. But how do you experience this? How do you know if this union has happened to you? How do you know to get in the water? How will you step into the water as the cathedrals used to sing? The answer is that you experience it by faith. You hear this from parallel verses, Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. There's our death. I have been crucified. I, dead, crucified with Christ. There's, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live, what? By faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So in other words, the I who died was the old, unbelieving, rebellious me. That's what Paul's writing. Hey, I was counting on the law. I was the righteous Pharisee. I was the guy who was getting salvation from another different way. And that guy is dead. I no longer trust the law like I used to. I now trust Jesus Christ. My faith is in him. I have a new life within me, faith that's counting on Jesus Christ. Christ. And the basis of all this is union with Christ. Christ lives in me. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. That's a spiritual union that happens. His death and his life is being now lived out in my life. Another illustration of how this experience would be Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus, Lord, so walk in him, rooted and build up in him and establish in faith. So here you get to see that faith in Christ is the way you experience your union with him. You receive him as Lord and Savior, and in that faith, you're united to him, you walk in him, and are built in him. So when Romans 6.3 says we are baptized into Christ Jesus, I take it to mean that baptism expresses the faith in which we experience the union with Christ. And this is presumably why God designed the mode of baptism to be portraying a burial. It represents the death that we experience when we're united to Christ. And this is why we are immersed. Trust me, it's a symbolic burial. But if burial was the only thing it portrayed, none of us would be baptized. Because I would put you in the water, and I would put you down under the water, and I would hold you there, and you would die. Who's getting baptized if baptism was the only thing that it portrayed? It's not the only thing that it portrays. But the second thing that it portrays is our newness of life in Christ. Verse 4, we were buried with him, therefore, with him by baptism and to death, in order that, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So nobody stays under the water in baptism. We come up 
out of the water. After death comes new life. The old eye, he's gone. He's buried beneath the waters. The new eye is rising to walk in newness of life. So now, let us not start thinking that the water is the means of which we're dead and by the which we are raised. I had a conversation with a guy at Malaga over breakfast uh, during camp meeting. And he made a statement that he came out of the Catholic Church. And then he gave me this statistic. He says, I left the Catholic Church. He said, 15% of Catholics are Christian. I just stopped him. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. What makes a Christian a Christian? Very eagerly. John 1.12. John 1.12. All who believe, all who receive, he made children of God. So I'm saying, okay, that's great. But if you talk to most Catholics, they'll call themselves Christians. They really were. They'll say, well, what's the difference? We all believe. What is the difference? And he said this. If you ask a priest how many of his congregation are Christians, he'll say all of them. And the reason? Water. Water. Baptism causes, effects, brings about regeneration, new birth. And that's guy, this guy was totally convinced that that was not true. He could no longer sit in the Catholic Church because the water is not the means by which regeneration happens. It happens through faith, and Paul hammers that out for the first five or six chapters of Romans, and hence after that, here he deals with baptism just to get an understanding of what happened to you when you got saved so that when you go under the water, you understand what it's portraying. The best uh, verse or commentary on how the truth that the water is not the means is Colossians 2.12. We have been buried with him in baptism, in which he were also raised with him, and here it is, through faith in the powerful working of God. So just like Peter starts out his first doxology, giving all God to praise for our salvation, blessed be God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He, by his great mercy, has caused us to be born again. John in chapter 112 says, all who believe, all who receive him. So we understand that salvation is effected by God causing us or causing faith. Now, what keeps me a credo baptism or Believing, well, can I just call myself a Baptist here? Can I just say we're a Baptist for, uh, just for the time being, just for the sake of argument, is this verse. It's through faith. And I didn't even understand this when I got baptized, but I knew that something, something mystical, as I want to say, I don't know how else to put it in words, but I just knew I needed to experience baptism. I just had to because I knew that I was a child of God. I knew he had done a great work in my life. I could understand how the old unbelieving self was just no more, how this new guy was coming out and just somehow walking through faith. Faith was evident, and I certainly wasn't perfect. I'm still not perfect. And for those of you who are waiting to be perfect, to be baptized, forget about it. You're just as messed up as I am. And I love that. We grow. We walk in newness of life. We get to test. We get to work out our faith, work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. That starts with baptism. There's a plethora of books that I read that I love the writers. And these guys are absolutely 100% that the water does the work. The priest goes in the water or holds the water over the head and just sprinkles you. I'm not convinced on the boat. You don't have to be immersed. If you can't stand water, I'll pour water over your head. If you really can't stand water, I'll sprinkle you. But to do it in front of people, to understand that the water represents your death and your... One word I use heard that I don't like to use is it's mediated. There's a mediation that happens in baptism. There's a certain mediation that happens, a mystical means of grace. The same with baptism. I've got to be honest. My life has not been the same since the whole complete package. Salvation, the Spirit of God sealing me, and then baptism. That's how the New Testament church conceived it. If you ask Paul, well, what about the Christians that aren't baptized? Now, it doesn't deal with that, but he'd probably say, why not? Why aren't they? 
So we are raised up with Christ, just like Romans 6, 4 says. We walk in in his life. But here in Colossians, Paul says that this comes through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him to dead. Now, our verse this morning doesn't say that. Romans 6, 4 does not say it's through faith. But there is a word there. Next slide. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. In order that, watch this, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by what? Now, the power of God is not there, but what word is there? By the glory of the Father. And if you put these two things together, next slide. One more, by the glory of the Father. Put these two words together, next one. One more, through the glorious powerful working of God. It's not the water. It's not me who calls on special kind of uh, power that makes the water something that it's not. It's not me, the pastor. It's God who effects the salvation. So Colossians 2.12 makes explicit what Romans 6.4 makes implicit, that baptism expresses our faith in the working of God to raise us from the dead. We believe that Christ is alive from the grave and reigning today as we sang at the right hand in heaven, which he will come again, praise God, Maranatha, right, in the power and glory. And that faith in God's working of glory, Paul calls it, is how we share in this newness of life that Christ has in himself. So this is what it means to be a Christian to live in the reality of what your baptism portrays. Do you have the slightest bit of faith, the mustard seed of faith this morning, that you say, oh God, I, I just come to you, I'm at the end. I really have nothing else but you. I, I totally trust in you as my Lord and Savior. Then the old person's die. You, you, you have an experience of death and then you say, but I intend. I just want to walk in. I want to, I want to trust you more. I want to do some amazing things that I never thought I could do in my life. And I just really am counting on you to provide for that newness of life that I'm going to walk in. Well, that's faith. And you have both experiences. And now to initiate or seal, I use baptism. Baptism is the portrayal of what happened to you at the moment of salvation. So just in a few moments, first we'll take the communion. Second, those of you who are going to be baptized, meet in the prayer room. We're going to do a quick little 10-minute uh, at the most um, class on what really happens to you at baptized. For those of you who haven't been baptized, like, you know what? Today's the day. I don't know when we're going to do this again. I, I want a baptism pool so bad here uh, that we're going to put right over here probably in this corner. And I got some really good guys working on it. It's going to rise up out of No, it's not going to do that. But um, that's, that's in my other dream. That's in my other church. Uh, so for now, we'll put an inflatable up there if we have to. Um, and we can just make it all part of the same service. And we can do it like instantly. Like, okay, Pastor, I want to be baptized. Great. Come back next week. The water will be ready. Uh, that's coming. That day's coming. Um, I don't know how many people I've baptized in this church, but what a pleasure it is. I know I'm probably and hopefully approaching above 50 um, that I've been able to baptize in five years. That is just amazing work of God, and I've got God to thank for that. So if you have just a mustard seed of faith, I encourage you to step inside the prayer room and join us this morning for baptism. But now we have the other sacrament the Lord's Supper. And my dad did an invitation, and I'll ask him on a flight when we're down to Florida where he came up with this invitation. I'm sure it's part of some kind of... Uh, but this invitation, if you can get to the invitation, right there, leave it right there. Now, just listen to these words as we apply them to what we've learned about baptism. What a believer truly is and why we would ever go down in the water to represent what happened to us. Watch the invitation. A believer... You, that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins. Man, I just want to turn. I'm sorry. I don't want to do that anymore. 
and are in love and charity with your neighbors. I was talking to Kathy this morning and being like, we've gotten away from that. And she's made it this thing. If she tells you she loves you, it's because she's genuinely in love with you. I love, I love you guys. I'm going to miss you guys. Am I truly in love and in charity with my neighbor? Intend. I have the best intentions. Do you guys got good intentions? Intend to lead that new life that's been given to me, following the commandments of God, which aren't burdensome, by the way, walking henceforth in his always ways. Watch this. Draw near with what? Faith. Faith. Draw near, take this for your comfort. Go through the baptism waters for your benefit. Draw near with faith. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Would you stand with me, please? Let's make that confession together. I don't know if we'll make this a practice, but I think I like it pretty good for right now. Almighty God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorrow for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. Grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life. To the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by the one offering of himself a full, a perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the world, and did institute in this holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and bless and sanctify thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts of bread and wine, that we are receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his passion, his death, and his resurrection, may be partakers of the divine nature through him, who in the same night was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take. Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink of it in remembrance of me. So would you pray with me this morning? Next slide, please. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to partake in this sacrament of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that we may walk in newness of life, may grow into his likeness, and may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. You may be seated. Could I have the ushers, please?
the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he broke it, he held it up and blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he held it up and blessed it, he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which was shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. Let's stand and be dismissed. Our Heavenly Father, I just... I'm in awe of what you have done. I thank you for everyone in front of me, Father God, for those who couldn't be here this morning, who are watching. Father God, we just ask a special blessing for those who weren't able to partake in this community of yours. Father God, I just ask that you would uh, just bless this church as I'm gone for two weeks. Father God, to just draw us closer, knit us together, Father God, make us like-minded, one-minded. Father, as we move now from here to this place of worship to the pool, Lord, I just ask that your presence would go with us and go before us. And Father God, that you would just do a far more in abundance than I could ever ask for. So Lord, thank you once again for ministering to us. We're not worthy, but you make us worthy. And we give you all the honor and glory and praise for that. And all God's children said, Amen. Malaga Pool.